Meniere's disease is defined by symptoms, really. That's to say, it's a disease where people get attacks of spinning lasting minutes to hours with some pressure and fullness in one ear uh, and sometimes a change in ringing or a new ringing. Uh, and sometimes they might even notice a drop in, drop in uh, hearing as well. Um, occasionally it can be in both ears, but it usually only affects one ear at a time. Uh, it can be quite disabling with the attacks of nausea and vomiting and being unable to move your head and have to lie in bed for hours at a time. The, what the underlying cause is, is not really clear. Uh, they, when, we, when people have looked at the temporal bones in their ears and the microscope, people who have, who have died who had many disease, they see a dilatation or a expansion in some of the inner ear compartments. But the linkage between that and the symptoms is really not clear to anybody, or what starts is not clear to anybody. The main symptoms of many disease are the uh, there is a recurrent attacks of spinning. Uh, usually at the beginning, people may have fluctuating hearing loss as well. The hearing loss might go up and down. Pressure and fullness in the ear is often a very common symptom as well. Over time, though, usually the, dro the hearing drops in, in the affected ear, so people will also complain of a hearing loss and a tinnitus or noise in that ear as well. So those are the different symptoms of different phases of the disease. No one quite knows what truly is disease. <coughs> one of the things, um, with people who have the disease, sometimes individuals might notice that certain things trigger them, for instance, stress, or uh, some people might think that a high salt intake might trigger individual attacks, but it's very variable from person to person. There's also quite an overlap between many as in migraine, and a lot of people who have many disease have migraine as well. And we know that migraine can also cause spinning attacks, and there's some, some debate whether migraine and many as are linked in some way as well. Stages are, at the beginning, people tend to have um, recurrent attacks of vertigo and the hearing can go back to normal between attacks. Uh, essentially what happens with time is the hearing drops further and further uh, and stays down between attacks and eventually they end up with the moderate to severe hearing loss and tinnitus as permanent. Um, the attacks of spinning in many people will, will start to go away over time, but it can take many years for that to happen. Uh, and not does not happen in everybody. Um, so it's really um, the main thing we can predict is over time you will lose your hearing more, uh, and you will when that happens you might have more tinnitus. But the spinning attacks can decrease over time in some people um, over years, but um, not in everybody. <clears throat> vertigo is just a symptom. <clears throat> so vertigo just means you have an attack of spinning. It's not, it's not an underlying diagnosis. It's like saying pain. Uh, pain can be caused by many different things. It's not a diagnosis. It's a symptom. Uh, so vertigo can be caused by many of disease. It can be caused by in viral infections. It can be caused by vestibular migraines. It can be caused by little particles floating around your area. So all these cause spinning, which is vertigo. But by itself, that's not a disease. That's just a, a description of a symptom. So in general, uh, treatment of many is, um, is uh, based on medical or surgical treatment. Uh, we'll go, usually go with medical treatment first. Uh, there's not a huge amount of really good quality evidence for many medical treatments, but they've been used historically for a very long time. And these would be things like salt restriction, uh, diuretics, which are drugs that make you lose body fluid, a uh, drug called beta-histine, which is a vasodilator. <clears throat> if these don't work, <clears throat> Other non-destructive treatments you might try are intrahepatic steroids, that is injecting steroids through the eardrum and letting them get absorbed in the ear, which can, might calm the ear down. Um, and then if these don't work, then we're into either surgical or destructive options. That means we try and um, kill the part of the inner ear that's acting up, the balance part, and uh, we can do that with gentamicin, which is a drug we inject through the eardrum and poisons the inner ear balance part and generally tends to affect the hearing less than the balance. Uh, and, and the other ear will take over balance function in that case. Uh, and, or we could uh, 
destroy the ear, surgically drill it out if nothing else works. And that will guarantee you getting rid of the tax of spinning, but you do sacrifice the remaining hearing in that ear, the remaining balance. Another option is to use something called analithetic sac decompression surgery, which is surgery, and basically tries to decompress the inner ear. <clears throat> it doesn't destroy hearing or balance, and it works about 70% of the time. So it's not 100% of the time like drilling the ear out, uh, but it's less destructive. So there's a range of options. We have to tailor it to each individual patient. There's no one best answer for any one patient. 